everyone. John Lorden here. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Brain Scratch Case Cracked. And I know it's been a while since we've done this show. We've had a lot of very tough searchlight updates over the past few weeks, but we finally have some room for a case cracked. So I wanted to do something a little special for you guys. Today, we're covering a case that many of you have suggested for a full brain scratch for a long time. And I was kind of waiting for some news updates on this particular case. I got one and it's one where this case might actually be cracked. Let's call this a case cracked with a question mark. Uh, but there's definitely some other aspects to this case that we don't firm, have firm answers on yet. Uh, I'm talking about the case of Rebecca Zahau. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Coronado is an island that is connected by a bridge to San Diego, California, and it has some beautiful and quite expensive mansions. In 2011, one of these mansions, known as the historic Spreckles Beach House, which is worth about $15 million, would be the location of not just one, but two horrible tragedies, both occurring only days apart from each other. Rebecca Zahau was born in Burma in 1979, and after living in Nepal and Germany, immigrated with her family to the United States around the age of 22. She lived with her parents and several siblings in St. Joseph, Missouri. In 2002, she got married, but six years later, while still married, she started dating a billionaire named Jonah Shacknai. She would finally get divorced in early 2011. July 11th, 2011, Rebecca, now 32 years old, and Jonah, 56, were vacationing at his Spreckles Beach House with Rebecca's teenage sister, Zena, and Jonah's six-year-old son named Max. They also had the family dog, who they called Ocean. The first tragedy would strike when six-year-old Max fell over a staircase railing around 10 a.m., Rebecca was reportedly in one bathroom when it occurred, and her younger sister, Zena, was taking a shower in, in another. Rebecca was the only adult in the home at the time, as Jonah was out at the gym. When medics arrived, Max was on his back, a razor scooter resting on his right shin, a soccer ball in the foyer, and Ocean sitting there on the landing. A broken chandelier laid shattered next to Max's left shoulder. Rebecca claims that Max whispered Ocean, the name of the dog, and then became unresponsive. Seriously injured, Max was taken to the hospital and put into an induced coma. Max's family starts arriving to support, including his aunt, a twin sister to his mother. Rebecca picks her up from the San Diego airport. Loved ones stay around Max constantly in the hospital, hoping for the best. The following day, Rebecca takes her sister to the airport to send her home. Zena had actually also received some cuts on July 11th. Apparently from cleaning up the broken chandelier and needed medical treatment, she received stitches at the Coronado Bay Urgent Care. They made a follow-up appointment for July 13th. However, as I mentioned, on the 12th, Rebecca took Zena to the airport and got her a flight home. This was actually several days earlier than her planned departure. Rebecca also picked up Jonah's brother, Adam, and brought him back to the mansion where he was planning on staying in a guest house. Cell phone records show that Rebecca spoke to her older sister, Mary, several times into the night. At around 12.50 a.m., Rebecca listened to a two-minute long voicemail. Investigators believe this message may be what triggered Rebecca to do what happened next. And they believe that this message came from Jonah, likely telling Rebecca that Max's condition was actually getting worse. The message, however, was deleted and family members on Rebecca's side question if we really know to this day what that message actually was or what it was about. The following morning, around 6.45 a.m., Adam wakes up to find Rebecca hanging from a balcony facing the backyard. She's dead, she's naked, and she has been bound her feet were tied together. Her wrists were also bound behind her back. Strips of her long sleeve t-shirt were wrapped around her neck with knots from the shirt stuffed into her mouth. Adam cut her down, removed the gag and tried CPR, but it was too late. 
he texted his brother Jonah to tell him that Rebecca had hung herself. Jonah was actually staying close to the hospital, of course, getting as much time as he could uh, to be there to support Max. Adam was interviewed by investigators, even given a polygraph on that day, but unfortunately the results of the polygraph were inconclusive. According to some reports, the medical examiners didn't even arrive on the scene for 13 hours after the, the discovery of Rebecca's body. The ME concludes that she likely died sometime between 1 and 3 a.m. On the door of the room that Rebecca was found hanging from was a message painted on the door in black paint. Black paint, which also traces of were found on her body. The message read, she saved him, can you save her? Why would Rebecca write about herself in the third person? And who is the you? On July 16th, Max would unfortunately become brain dead and is finally taken off life support. Controversy would also continue around this aspect of the case. A trauma doctor stated that he thought Max may have been suffocated prior to his fall. However, investigators would eventually rule this an accident. On July 18th, a private memorial service is held for Max. Rebecca was buried at St. Joseph's Memorial Park in Missouri on July 23rd. Detectives for the San Diego County Sheriff initially said that it was certainly suspicious, but soon after concluded that Rebecca's death was simply a suicide. However, for numerous years, the media did not agree. Uh, conversations and questions continued to swirl around this. Would a woman really strip nude, tie her feet together, hands behind her back, gag herself, and then hang herself outdoors? Or is that more likely some type of vengeful act by someone trying to hum humiliate her? If so, who would do that and why? In 2013, Rebecca's family attorney filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Adam, Jonah's brother, as well as Max's mother, Dina, and her sister, Nina. Dina and Nina would quickly be dropped as defendants when they provided solid alibis. The lawyers for the Zahau family believe Rebecca was strangled and killed before she was hung off the balcony, and that Adam staged the suicide to cover up his crime. They also believe that the handle of the knife used to cut her down was also used in a sexual assault on Rebecca. However, the autopsy report doesn't note any trauma to support that. It does, however, note some sort of tape residue being found on the back of her legs, which is still unexplained to this day. A handwriting expert says the painted note on the door does not seem to match Rebecca's handwriting style, although she was known to paint. Uh, it does, however, come in as similar to Adam's writing style. The ropes binding her were using nautical type knots, a clean hitch knot, as well as a slip knot, and they were all made using a red marine rope. Adam worked as a tugboat captain in Memphis, Tennessee, and would be very familiar with those types of knots. However, despite the fact that Adam says he cut her down, the only DNA found on the ropes belonged to Rebecca. Was he wearing gloves when he cut her down? Why would he do that? In February of 2018, the civil suit trial began. The Zahau legal team argued that Adam sexually assaulted Rebecca, struck her over the head several times, and hung her over the balcony. Adam's lawyer countered there was no physical evidence to connect him to the murder. Only Rebecca's DNA was found on the knives and ropes used to bind her, and Adam had been questioned and cleared by homicide investigators. Jurors during the month-long trial heard competing testimony from medical examiners, not experts, psychologists, and sheriff's investigators. They also heard emotional pleas from the Zahau and Shacknai families. One month later, after only one day of jury deliberations, they handed in their verdict. Adam Shacknai was found responsible in the death of Rebecca Zahau in a 9-3 vote. He was ordered to pay $5 million to the Zahau family. However, his legal team intends on filing an aggressive appeal. His brother Jonah says it's in inconceivable that Adam murdered Rebecca. Will the Sheriff's Department reopen this case considering the new ruling? The Zahau family's legal team is petitioning the department to do exactly that. 
If Adam did write the message on the door, what was he trying to say? The notion that Rebecca saved Max is highly questionable. Many people think she's in some form responsible for what happened to him since she was the only caretaker there when this occurred. Was, quote, can you save her a message to God? If he was trying to stage this as a suicide, why not leave a more direct message to lead everyone to come to that conclusion? And a mystery certainly remains. What really happened to Max? Biomotion experts say that Max's center of gravity was too low and that someone had to have lifted him up over the rail for him to fall in that manner. Did Rebecca possibly get angry at Max? Did her 13-year-old younger sister have something to do with it? Was this intentional or was this purely some type of strange accident? It does seem that Max may have been holding on to his razor scooter when he fell, as there are marks on the upstairs banister that match paint transfer marks on the tires of the razor scooter. And his scooter obviously wound up on the floor beside him. Children do run around, leap and play. We know that the scooter is involved and has fallen in some way. We've also got the soccer ball. Is Rebecca really telling the truth about the word ocean coming from his lips? Possibly in an effort to explain that there was some type of accident that he had involving the dog? We may, unfortunately, never know. Is Rebecca's case truly cracked? In the opinion of nine jurors, it is. However, we'll see what the appeals process has in store. When Inside Edition interviewed Rebecca's sister, Mary, and asked what she would say to Adam Shackney today, she said, I would want to know why, and I'm going to tell him that I forgive him, because my sister would have. Case cracked, like I said, with a question mark. Um, I don't know. Very, very tough case. I'm kind of surprised to see the jurors go that direction with it, considering the lack of physical evidence. But... The lack of physical evidence is also remarkable in a way because we know that he at least touched the rope. He had to cut it down. He at least touched a knife to cut the rope down. Um, there should have been some DNA transfer of him just as he's handling her, trying to get her down from hanging up there. And none of that type of information is found. So it's almost one of those situations where things are a little too clean and it doesn't quite make sense. Uh, another point that comes up if you look into this case is uh, shoe prints and, and feet prints. And essentially, it's the balcony, the floor of the balcony. Um, there are no shoe prints to indicate that Adam was out there. They did see what looked like bare footprints um, only one good set of them that was actually on this tile. And then it looked like her toes kind of closer to the railing. Uh, there have been a lot of different uh, news organizations that have tried to recreate different scenarios here um, using dummies and weights and all kinds of things, throwing them off balconies time and time again. There was one that I saw in particular where a man carried a dummy over there, uh, kept his feet inside the actual home, but was still able to get the dummy um, kind of propped up against the railing and then throw them over. So it does seem feasible that he still could have done that. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's really interesting to just not have a ton of great DNA information but you've got these things that are really hard to put aside, like the way that she's found. I mean, her hands are bound behind her. There was also a lot of testing done around that. And there was people that did figure out ways to tie themselves up. Um, essentially, you would start tying your, your wrists together in front. You would slip one hand out, move them around to your back, slip the hand back in, and then tighten up the knots. Um, so for the sheriffs, they were kind of fine with the conclusion that Rebecca had really done all this to herself, gagged herself, tied herself up and went out naked. I just, I don't get it. Uh, and in terms of, there's a lot of expert opinions um, that no one's ever really seen a suicide like this. And the amount of time that it would take for you to do all that to yourself is a lot of time to consider what you're actually doing. Of course, when you throw in this mystery about what happens to Max, we really don't know the pressure. Does Rebecca feel responsible? Was she directly responsible in some way for what happened to him? It's kind of hard for us to know the emotional pressure she might have been under. So 
It's a really strange one. We will certainly um, stay up to date on this. And if there's any developments, I'm sure that there's going to be more with the appeals process. But any major developments, like a ruling gets overturned, or if the sheriff's department does decide to reopen the case, uh, I will be sure to let you know here on the channel. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Hope you have a nice day. Come back tomorrow to Lord and Arts channel, and I'll see you there.